Packing and shipping books is pretty easy. This is how I do it. We're gonna be at a weird angle for most of this. If you're worried about presentation, you might wanna pick up these acetate sleeves. They're not that expensive. I typically don't use them. Most of the books that I sell are on whatnot. I, I move huge volume, so I typically don't bother. But if you're selling more valuable books, books that are worth like 15, 20 bucks or more, I would contemplate picking these up. They're different sizes. I use standard bubble wrap. You can get these at any office supply store. You can get them at Walmart. Brand doesn't really matter to me. They're the 12 inch by 12 inch squares. They have perforations every 12 inches, so you can rip off a square. You can do a lot with this stuff. And I uh, bubble wrap the books and put them in the same poly mailers that I use for clothing. Put it in the middle, fold it over, fold it over, and you'll see the problem that arises here. There is a bunch of material on the ends sticking out here. When these get folded over, it's gonna be a little awkward. Um, not too bad, but you'll see it's heavier on the ends, thicker on the ends than it is in the middle. Not a gigantic problem. That's perfectly fine. You can just put that into a poly mailer and then that'll work. This is preferable to me to doing the actual bubble mailers, even though they're a little sturdier, just because they're much more expensive compared to buying bubble wrap and then using these cheapy poly mailers that cost, I think, five cents. When I did the back of napkin math, so you would just seal that up and that's ready to ship out if you want. A little bit more security with these single books. Do two squares. That'll make for, um, or that'll give it more padding. And it's just more cushioned and it doesn't have the weird bulbous ends quite as much. There's a little more structure to it, it's a little more stable. Up to you. Same deal. If you want to do two books, two to three books, depends on the thickness of the book. Let's just say that it's about that thickness of books. And these are obviously paperbacks. We're going to do hardcovers too. For this, I'm going to do two squares. I like to start it with the edge here, cover the edge, and then roll it, roll it, roll it, tape. I stand it up like this, so it's in the middle. If you're messing around too much on the table wrapping it, you can push the books up and uh, run out of space up here. So I stand it up like this to preserve that same amount of space. I depress the ends in, fold over once, fold over again. Two pieces of tape, you can use packing tape, you can use scotch tape. The thing that you're trying to avoid is any kind of exposed corner, so check the corners. Make sure that it's not like paper on just one layer of plastic. Make sure they're not pokey. Same goes for the edges. You want everything to be under at least one layer of bubble. Let's say we're getting into the zone where we have to ship a whole bunch of books. You can do something like this in a larger poly mailer. Um, I don't remember the exact dimensions of this one, but you get a larger poly mailer and then you break this up into two roughly equivalent sized stacks and then you wrap them individually uh, and then shove them in. I'll show you. Use three or four squares for this. And see how this, the books are closer to this side than that side. There's all this excess material. Just shove these more into the middle, fan them up, over, over. I'm just gonna slot them in sideways one at a time into this poly mailer. And then take that, seal it up like that. And then I would put a piece of tape here just to reinforce it. Uh, I neglected to say, when you're doing something like this with one of these smaller poly mailers. Sometimes, uh, a lot of the time, they're gonna be too thick. There's not gonna be enough clearance for you to just slot them in sideways. So if you put them in lengthwise like this and then seal it, there's gonna be a whole bunch of room left over on the side here. See, so here's the books and then there's all this extra material. What I always do is take a 
length of packing tape. This is the thicker packing tape, if you can see it. And then I will gather this edge at the halfway point, roughly. Fold here, up, and the X, like the, the cushion of air will um, escape. Fold it over, make sure that's down. And now that's a much tighter, neater package. Sometimes you'll be in a position uh, where you have, this is a dramatic example, a larger paperback and you have to ship it with one or two smaller books. So if you just bubble wrap this up, the tension of the bubble wrap would curve that lower book up. It would potentially damage it. What you wanna do here is cut out a piece of cardboard that's the same size as this to reinforce it, put it underneath and then bubble wrap it just like you did the rest of the stuff. Hard covers are the same deal. I would just use two squares for this. Uh, the taller up, they go more squares. Uh, you'll get the hang of it. Um, if you have a ton of books, if you have like a bunch of books or they're weird sizes, too much to fit in one of these poly mailers, just use a cardboard box. Still put them in some kind of protective layer, either one of these poly, ma poly mailers or something like this, a clear poly mailer, or put them in their individual acetate bags. Don't just put them into cardboard unprotected because that package can get left out in the rain. It can get exposed to elements and the books will be destroyed. For really large or really expensive books that need a certain amount of presentation, above and beyond just a poly mailer. You can use these book mailers. These were given to me, so I don't know actually what title to search on Amazon to find them. Here's a signed copy of the Corrections by Franzen. Let's say someone bought it for like a hundred bucks on eBay. This cardboard thing uh, is preferable to doing the poly mailers to my mind. So these edges fold in, this folds up, that folds over, you tape it down. And it is a large oversized package, but that's a lot more protection. You can stuff it with bubble wrap and whatnot. And this is once again in a protective sleeve. Books should all ship media mail unless they have ads in them, I think is the caveat. So even something like that, it's gonna ship for like four or five bucks. Most of this advice is tailored to whatnot because you're not gonna be shipping multiple books on eBay nearly as much as on whatnot. But it is simple. I mean, don't overthink it, just put bubble wrap around it. And if you put a, a book into bubble wrap, like you don't have to put an extra sleeve on here to protect it. This is waterproof. That's pretty much it. Put bubble wrap around it, put it in a thing, ship it out, you're done.